Hello and welcome to Off The Court. We are at the business ends of this Super League netball season. How do we know? Well, there were flames coming off Tamsin's touchscreen on Monday and her and Di went for some serious power dressing. Leopard print all the way. You know the semi-finals <laughs> are fast approaching when they pull that number out of their wardrobe. Welcome, Tamsin. Round 15 done and dusted. Many of the results were the results that we would expect, but maybe not so much the performances. Well, the pressure's coming on, isn't it? And it's really interesting listening to some of the coaches' uh, comments after the games, probably quite frustrated with how some of the top teams um, put put their performances out on court. But actually, you know, the second half of the season, what starts to happen is the teams below you attack you. They come at you. They come at guns firing. They want to um, take a scalp. They've got nothing to lose. Tactically, they've been able to work on things. And I think that's what we saw during this round. Look, the reality is the results were what we expected. And the biggest part of this is how those top teams respond. And we saw that, uh, especially with the likes of Loughborough Lightning, how they backed up their doubleheader this weekend. Well, let's take a look at some of those highlights now with Claire Thomas. After coming up short against Leeds Rhinos in round 14, Strathclyde Sirens bounced back to winning ways as they took on Surrey Storm. They were made to work for it, though, as the sides found themselves level at the halfway mark, 24 apiece. Cue the brilliant Emma Barry, whose formidable shooting performance in the final two quarters secured a 52-39 to 39 win for Sirens. Celtic Dragons were under no illusions about the challenge which lay ahead in facing the 2019 champions, Manchester Thunder. The Welsh side came flying out of the blocks, a charge spearheaded by a confident Amy Clinton, who demonstrated all of her flair in the circle. Ultimately, Thunder had just too much for Dragons, as their own sharpshooter, Joyce Mvula, proved as destructively dynamic as ever, taking the Northerners to a respectable 14-goal win. Having lost nine consecutive matches, Storm had nothing to lose and everything to prove against Lightning. It was Loughborough who would triumph, as a dominant performance saw them record a convincing 53-28 scoreline. But so athletic and impressive was Storm defender Alima Priest that, even in defeat, she caught the Sky Sports expert's eyes and was awarded the coveted Player of the Match award. Well, Sarah Francis Bayman described that first win uh, from Loughborough as ugly. It was more of a thing of beauty come Monday night. But Loughborough didn't give us the Player of the Match. It was... Storm's Alima Priest, amazing really. You lose by 25 goals and she was still the standout player. Why, Tamsin? And I've got to say, Sarah francis Bayman, when I told her, did give me a very stern look from above her mask. <laughs> well, you can blame Ebony or Sarah Brown, who was in comms, who picked Alima Priest. But you know what? I'm all for uh, the best player on the pit on the court, sorry, getting the player of the match. And Alima Priest uh, had plenty of opportunity to show why she is such a goalkeeper. The amount of ball um, that Storm that gave to Loughborough Lightning, well, the defensive pressure of Loughborough Lightning, meant that it was coming down thick and fast towards Mary Chollock. And Alima Priest stood up to it. You saw some of the stats there. Four intercepts, six deflections and five turnovers. She was impressive, even getting a defensive rebound off the six foot seven um, international and I think what you have to remember is where Alima Priest has come from, that matchup as well. You know, we've seen, um, it's going to see so many new young names coming into the England mix, and Alima's not even in that mix yet. And yet she stood up to the challenge, a training partner for Surrey Storm last season, has got herself onto the court this year and is improving in every single game. For what I liked about it was her variety. She didn't just stick on the body, and it's so easy to panic when you're playing against a Cholock and so much ball is coming at you. Yet she tried different things. She fooled Loughborough into putting certain ball in, and she was really smart in how she had that game. Well, there was a huge cheer when she was announced as player of the match from all the Storm players. It's been a difficult few weeks, hasn't it? So Francis Bayman was a lot happier with that performance on Monday than she was. She's pretty deflated on Sunday. And you picked out a couple of reasons as to why. Yeah, well, look, stars were impressive and they took it to Loughborough. What we talked about earlier, you know, those teams at the bottom have nothing to lose. It was a 50-41 win in the end. But just check out this attacking play from Loughborough there. Absolutely no one coming towards the ball and a turnover. Um, 
going to pick it up again here. Again, look at everybody running away from the ball. Allow Lucy Herman, who had a great game for st seven stars, to come out on the fly. They get the throw in, but this is important. I go on about press all the time. Panagari comes to throw in. Ella Clark, um, Williams, Cholok all behind play. And that's a hell ball off a throw in. You can understand why Sarah Bayman got frustrated. There was only five in it going into the last quarter. This was seven stars. Loughborough did not win enough ball. Um, they played it wide. They frustrated them. They got them absolutely pinged out the game. 79 penalties at the end of the game for Loughborough Lightning. You can kind of sense why Reed and Rowe were so effective in the circle and kept with them. Interestingly, even in this last quarter, when Loughborough started to open up the game, and they really did, they were more direct. Ella Clark, for me, uh, started to show up in that last quarter and really started to perform. Um, but they were lucky in how they got turnovers. There were three unforced errors, um, a hell ball, attacking contacts, a footwork for uh, seven stars. But this play was far better from Loughborough Lightning. You could see the patience and how they built it in. They were actually available for the ball. Clark um, and Livers making a big difference. But look, Loughborough shouldn't be happy with that performance. They have to understand what stars did to them. I think they definitely switched on for their game against Surrey Storm. The difference in their defensive pressure, how they stepped up and were so aggressive, um, was incredible. So uh, I think at this point in the season, you've just got to accept teams are going to go at you. It's how you respond. And they responded so well. Talking of defensive efforts, you're always saying it's your mantra, isn't it? Defence wins trophies. Should we just give the trophy to Bath after that performance against Leeds? Because it was epic, wasn't it? They were my pick at the start of the season. They're still my pick now. And I think after that victory against Manchester Thunder, they've turned over a new leaf as well. They, are, they mean business. This was an impressive performance against Rhinos. They did their homework. They stamped their authority. It's where they won ball. Look at this, first of all, forcing the feed in. So Brown, one-on-one on, one on Wellham. They kept up six goals in the second quarter, 21 um, in, by three-quarter time. Look at the defensive pressure from the centre pass. That's something I think they've certainly worked on, that sort of three over at the start. And you're just going to watch this here. Layla Guscott this time. So the switch with Osoa Brown to come through on Wallum. They just created themselves so many opportunities all mm -hmm. through the defensive unit. Watch this back up from Sophie Drakeford Lewis. Almost gets it. Keep your eye on Alison and, and Serena Guthrie, how aggressive they are to force Rhinos into issues. Um, and then their attack was split. Watch the individual battles. Here with Serena Guthrie, she um, was all over Jay Clark. Um, and then, of course, Borgia opened up this circle. I think Bath really exposed um, their lack of tall keeper in that circle. Sophie Drakeford Lewis and Borgia just showing how slick they are. And you know what? It, it was a, a team that is going to be in the final performance and they certainly showed Rhinos uh, the sort of mark where they need to be. Leila Guska, player of the match. It could be could have been any one of those uh, Bath players, couldn't it? Serena Guthrie, it like, looked like superwoman oh. at one point. And I've just got to say, Ebony, brought the same sort of execution and energy to her commentary, didn't she, on Monday night as she did to the court on Sunday. She was fantastic both days. And she got to watch uh, Wasp team against Pulse, didn't she? And I saw Mel Mansfield just before I did the interview with her post-match, and she just looked at me and she said, why do I do it? Why do I put myself through this stress? I mean, they won, but her team again put her through the ringer, didn't they, Tamsin? Well, it was a hard place to be in the last game of the round. And of course, watching all the other top three teams win and knowing the pressure that was coming on from Ryan. It was a bit of a breathing space with that loss uh, against Bath. However, Wasp knew that this could be their banana peel game, their slip up game against a solid London pool side. And it was edgy. You know, Wasp started really well. And I want to see, show you why. Um, Fran Williams work great on Radaman, not happy to feed the ball into Sushin. She kept her out the circle. And this is Amy Flanagan's bread and butter. This is how Wasp started. Really solid, really strong, really controlled. They brought the ball through well. And look at the one-on-one -on -one with Keeble and Rachel Dunn. Of course, no Adio out in, with injury. Um, and they just opened up the game 14-7 after the first quarter, looking really comfortable. However, the story of Wasp's season so far is their inconsistencies. And, and actually, this is taken from the second quarter. They missed from Tasheen. Really confident again coming through the court. And in the second quarter, Christian there on the ball, who ended up with player of the match, they um, they went 10, 10, 11 goals up. You're seeing the same sort of pattern, lobbing the ball into Rachel Dunn, who finally got back to 32 goals. However, it changed. Uh, they went through a sticky patch with Fidoju at um, goal defence. And just keep your eye on how much trouble they've had getting the ball in the circle. And it's how quickly this changed. 
having to swing the ball around, no hold from Rachel Dunn. And this was incredible from Fred Oju. I think she picked up about three or four balls just in this quarter that dragged them back into the game, going in at four at half time. And the difference now um, in this attack end, they suddenly started to find the sheen. They were patient with what they were doing. Um, so up had to step Fran Williams, who uh, started to play incredibly well against Radaman. Um, and finally, Wasps in this last quarter, look at the difference of how they bodied up against London Pools. So they stopped Fred Oju being able to come on anything. Um, they pulled them out of the game. See Rachel Dunn just having a little roll around on the floor there. And finally, they got back to the hold. You're going to see this from Dunn, the screen off and the pop. They found their way back into the game. But I tell you what, what an easy time to sit and watch. And I can imagine how Mansfield was feeling because I was feeling every single play with her in, um, in the studio on Monday night. But look, Wasp, I've got over the line on that one. It's all in their hands now. They've got two tricky games coming up with Thunder and Mavericks in the next few weeks. But... That was another step in the right direction. They got back to within three, didn't they, Pulse? And the energy yeah. in that in the copper box was extraordinary. I had Hallie Adio just sitting a few rows behind me with Siggy Berger screaming. And that whole change in the way the game was played was at the second quarter, was it, when Funmi Fideju came on, uh, well, switched to goal defence. A bit of a masterstroke from Sam Bird. I mean, she's been extraordinary all season, hasn't she? I just, I can't get my head around how a 19-year-old can play so well. And she was almost turned, changed the game on, a, on her own, didn't she? Yeah, it's, it's just pure natural talent. I was talking about it in the studio on Monday. I can understand why attackers throw the ball into spaces because it looks so open. Her recovery, and more importantly, her range, is, is just out of this world. You can see that 11 deflections. That's purely because of her range. Uh, two intercepts, and she was unlucky not to get more. She caused all kinds of problems. And what starts to happen, once she gets a couple or gets a couple of arms to things, it starts to put doubt in attackers' minds, and that's what you're seeing more and more. I think for Sam Bird, it's working out where she bets fits tactically against each team. Do they need her against the wing attack or do they need her against uh, the goal attack? I think that will develop over time. But look, we, I know with the announcement she's been seen in the Futures England Futures programme, it won't be long before that kid gets bumped up. And I tell you what, she, when we talk about players that will get opportunities overseas, um, they will be looking. Her name is being talked about already, and I'm sure she has got a bright future ahead. Yeah, she plays just with a lovely energy and a smile on her face as well, which we love to see, don't we? Let's have a look at the results from round 15. I mean, the top line is that the top four teams all won. Loughborough Lightning getting two wins. It was a good weekend for them. Manchester Thunder doing well against the Celtic Dragons. Again, another spirited display from them. We've seen Wasps go through as well. So it's as you were at the top. Leeds Rhinos obviously missing out on the chance to close that gap. So there we have it. Top four. And Wasps do have a little bit of breathing space after that win over Pulse, which will delight Mal Mansfield's Mavericks with the weekend off. They've got a little bit of... Uh, points to make up, haven't they, when they go again this weekend? Well, it's been a busy weekend of netball, but it's also been a busy weekend for Jess Thalby, who named her Roses squad. We will have a look at that and bring you one of those names that made the headlines after the break. Welcome back to Off The Court, where in just over 14 months' time, England are hoping to defend the gold medal that they won in Birmingham at the Commonwealth Games. And this week, Jess Selby has named the squad that she hopes will be able to do just that. 24 names, 17 from over here, seven from over the other side of the world, Tamsin. And as you have a look at those, who are the names that really stand out? And are there any that, of those that aren't there that you think they should be? Well, I think it's such an interesting list. I tweeted yesterday just how strong um, the squad is across the country. You know, England is brimming with talent at the minute. Not only have you got those old experienced players, but the youngsters 
the exciting youngsters that are coming through, um, which is amazing to see. I think it's really hard to discuss who's missing because I'm not actually sure who put their name forward. Um, the only person I saw was Kadeen Corbin. They put out on Twitter yesterday she was gutted, um, but will be working really hard to try and get into that squad. But look, when you look across the big names, your Jeevers, your Serena Guthries, and then, of course, some of the young, exciting players, I can't wait to see how this squad develops. Ebony Asura Brown just cleared up why she wasn't on that list. She's obviously going through a different pathway, she hopes, to the Commonwealth Games. But look who we've got alongside us. I think anybody who's watched the Super League this season, for them, two names stand out. Halima Adio from London Pulse and Rhea Dixon. Congratulations. You've wowed us all season. When and where did you find out that you were going to join the Vitality Roses? Um, I was, hello, firstly, um, I was at work um, and I work in, sort of behind the scenes at um, Rhino. So I was in the office and I was just getting on with my work. And then I thought, oh, I haven't had my email through. Um, maybe I'm not getting one. And then I sort of went and refreshed and it was there. And I was a bit like, oh, I've got to double check it and check it again. But yeah, it did say congratulations. <laughs> and And... How hard has it been? Because that was about two weeks ago, wasn't it? To keep it a secret. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's I had to tell sort of mum and dad, um, but that was kind of kind of kept it within that little circle. So, yeah, it's been great to um, hear the support and and have so many messages from people who um, sort of I didn't even expect to get congratulations from. So it's been cool. And it's amazing to think that just over a year ago. You were travelling around Australia and not even playing netball. And here you are now, your name amongst the list of gold medalists of netballing legends in this country. It must feel amazing and surreal all at the same time. Yeah, um, 100%. This time last year, I've genuinely... So during the first lockdown, I got um, a job working nights in a bakery. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> and I was genuinely not thinking about doing that for a career and not netball. So actually uh, to be here now, um, sort of the people who told me not to give up and, and to keep pushing and, and yeah, I owe it to them really to be here. And one of those people <clears throat> was probably so was probably you, Tamsin, wasn't it? Because you've coached Rhea in the past when she was a little bit younger. Did you get the sense then, not wanting to embarrass you too much, Rhea, that, you know, the, the talent was there. It was just how to harness it in the right way. Rhea was always special. So I had a for a brief period in the England under 21 setup. I had to sadly step away as coach, but um, she had something. She knew she had something. We were there with her Surrey Storm pathway as well. Um, I think the biggest thing for me always was a confidence. And I talk about this a lot as young England defenders, you can come through almost fearless, nothing to lose going on. But actually to come on and as an attacker is a huge um, pressure, you know, weight on your shoulders to come on to to put your shots up, to get in the circle, to perform. Um, and I think that was probably the one thing for Rhea. It was just her self-belief. And Rhea, I'm really intrigued by this because I'm so glad you haven't given up because there was always that spark there. But I want to know from you where you've almost found that that confidence, that belief in yourself, because it's definitely showing on court this year. Um, I think, I guess it's just the environment that you're in, really. I like being surrounded by the girls that I am and to have Dan... Um, sort of in my corner. I remember we had a, like um, her, him and Mags, we had a, a meeting before we started the season and the things they said about the belief in me was just something that I haven't really felt before. And from then on, just going from game to game, I guess it's just growing. There's still, there's still areas to work on, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely a big growth. <laughs> Tamsin and I talk a lot, uh, you know, about watching you guys play. And, and when we do, we can kind of feel the energy, the sense of fun, the sense of excitement. And that comes through in the confidence that we've seen you and lots of, of your teammates playing. Give us a sense of what that vibe's like at Leeds. We hear a lot from Dan, but we don't hear so much from the players about what it's, what it's like to play with that group of players. Um... I guess it speaks for itself like there's there's um it's just a vibe like you said we it, and it comes from every single player and every single member of staff um there's not one person that sort of brings the energy down you know everyone comes with their best selves to training and um we just feed off it 
every single session. We've watched Danelle. I mean, we only watch and admire from the outside. Close up, what's she like? <laughs> you know, we don't still know an awful lot about her. Yeah, she might be able to hear me. She's in the room next door, but um, she's she's honest. She came so sh sort of shy, and you know, she hadn't been out of the country before. So, um, she yeah, she, she I don't think she really knew what to ex expect. But the more the more we um, we've got to know each other, and and the more we've sort of had fun outside of netball. Um, honestly, she's such a great character, and um, hopefully, you know, looking forward into the future together. We touched on your disappointing loss to Bath in, in the first part of the programme. I mean, where does that leave you as a group? What's been said since then? And, and how do you feel about going into these last few games and where you might finish this season? Yeah, um, it, uh, after the Bath game, you know, obviously you've probably heard we don't talk too much about winning, losing, all that. But it's really about a learning performance, um, learning about our performance and you know, being put against some of the world's best defenders um, is only going to make us better and and be an experience. So we've uh, we're going to talk about it, um, discuss how we can develop, and then move on to to stars next week. As a group, you set yourself an expectation at the beginning of the season. Did you have you surpassed that? Even if you don't kind of make it into the top four. Yeah, that as a team, you always go in with more than a goal just to win. You know, there's always things that um, <clears throat> you want to sort of solidify, especially as a first, um, as an inaugural team. Um, definitely sort of clarifying our roles and, and what they are in the team. Well, Ria, thank you very much for joining us on a really exciting week. We can't wait to see you, hopefully, in that red dress soon amongst those superstar names you've... Um, You've given us plenty to uh, get excited about this season. So go well in the last few weeks and we will, of course, be watching. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Rhea. Good luck. Absolutely our pleasure. <laughs> Tamsin, thanks for joining us as well. You will be keeping your eye across another whole host of what we hope will be fantastic day games on the weekend. Stars against... Rhinos, Bath against Storm Wasps, Sirens, and then Thunder Mavericks. That game on Sunday could have real repercussions, couldn't it, for who finishes in the top four. And then on Monday, yes, more netball as well. Wasps against Manchester Thunder, another absolute belter. And London Pulse against Loughborough Lightning. Who can believe it? We are up. So round 16 already, this season is going to be over in a flash of an eye, but there are, is still plenty to play for. The semi-finals, that's what everybody is aiming for. Let's see who takes a step towards them this weekend. Sky Sports, feel it all.